Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek of It. I am Penge and as you can obviously see we are back with just one line. We played this a while back, was it about a month ago or so, maybe a bit more, six weeks, and I really enjoyed it. I thought this was excellent. And uh, yeah, I got to the end of what there was because it's early access, so I got to the end of the current content, but I was messaged recently on Twitter by Joel Studios and they said, hey, there's a new quest. And also looking into it, they've also added some more stuff as well. So they've added, I think, with the variant system, which I think is variants of weapons, possibly. I wasn't really sure. And um, yeah, the Steam Workshop content as well, which I think is upcoming. I don't think it's actually live yet. I'm not entirely sure. But Just One Line is very clever in its game format in that my character, the previous one, which was Billy. Was it Billy Cupboard? Yes, it was, wasn't it? Because Johnny Cupboard was first and then Billy Cupboard was second. So um, yes, Billy Cupboard got to the end of his career and he retired. And all the things that he has learned, all the uh, knowledge and experience and roles and races and things get passed on. So if I go to a new game now, we should be able to pick different things here. So we'll be able to pick a different background and also, more excitingly than this, we can pick to be an orc. Because we can. Now I think these guys are locked, 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 human. But no, we unlocked orcs before. So an orc comes with an extra point of power, which is very cool. And also I think we don't have to be a commoner either. Uh, how do we change this bit? I can't remember how we changed that. I swear we unlocked something else other than a commoner. Uh, I was a hunter previously, wasn't I? How do I get to change this? I'm not entirely sure. Okay, so let's have a look at what we can be then. So he, he can have hair. Yeah, let's let's do let's do that. Let's have him. Yes, yes, hair like that. That is awesome. No, like that. And oh, we can be a different color. Okay. Oh, let's make him. Let's make him really pale like that. And he can have. <laughs> yes, yes, that is tremendous. Yeah, we're having that. We're having him. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Um. And I get to pick a point of these as well, don't I? I get to pick a point of this. Uh, so, so, I think if I click it, it adds one to it. And I can select whichever one I like. Now, I could go all the way down for power. I could go three power. And that'll be good, using interactions which require strength, endurance, or to be intimidating. But I've already got the three point in power. So, I might put it in either wit. So, interactions which require memory, logic, or magic. Or cunning. I think he might be cunning. Let's have cunning. And we're going to call him, because I can't remember if you get to give them a name in the thing or not, but he is going to be Orkish Dave. This is Orkish Dave right here. And doesn't he look like a fine specimen of an orc? He looks tremendous. So, yeah, commoners 50. Yeah, there were things here. I can't remember quite how I... I don't know. Is that it? Do I get to pick one of these? Is that what I was doing? Could I pick one of these? Ah, yes, that's it. I could be a cleric, look. I could be a cleric. There you go, because I can be a commoner. So I get related to actually power. Yes, that's fine. Can use basic gear, can change profession once. And I think I unlocked stuff. So woodland keepers, obviously I can't do. Stone cutters I can't do. Clan bloody sale, which would befit an orc, I can't do. Tricked witch fellowship I can't do. However, I could be a cleric. Uh, or I could be a warrior. And did I lock an, unlock another one? And a hunter. Yes, I was a hunter last time, wasn't I? So I can use gear from the power and cunning advanced lists. It can be a tracker. So I think, do you know what? If he's an orc, and yeah, do I go down the go down the warrior route? Or should I go down that route? Yeah, cleric doesn't befit really an orc, I don't think. Not with power. I'd rather have a cleric with wit and cunning. So let's go down here. Let's join the shield brothers. The most trained and reliable fighters of the kingdom. These guys seriously like weapons and armors. There is no technique they can't master. There is no move they can't perform. And there is no weapon they can't wield. When you need versatility and efficiency, the warriors of the Shield Brothers are the best. And you get related attribute power, obviously. Can use gear from the power excellent list. And they get in interactions of advanced combat. There we go. So Orkish Dave is going to be a warrior. Now I'm just a bit worried that is a little bit dull because my last guy was a bit fighty, wasn't he? Shall I try something different and go down that route? I might do that, you know. I might go completely mad. Let's have an orc with wit. Let's have a witty orc using interactions which require memory, logic or magic, just because I want to be a cleric. Uh, the my last character was fighty. I chose the fighty options, the sort of fighty, shovey ones. 
and yeah, it was it's fine. That's good, and and it was good, and he did well. Did uh, did Billy Cupboard, but um, Orkish Dave, Orkish Dave, I think we need to go down something different, or we're going to be choosing the same options again. We're going to be playing the same game again, but with Orkish Dave. So let's go for a cleric. Let's have an Orkish cleric, humble servants of the gods. It's easy to choose risk your life. Uh, when hang on, what? It's easy to choose to risk your life when you can count on divine protection, isn't it? These enchanters specialise on defensive magic, channeling the power of the gods through prayers and charity. Although the ones that become famous heroes tend to be more charitable to themselves than to others, it seems it doesn't affect their magic connection to the gods. So a related attribute, wit, which I've upped a point in, can use gear from the power, which is useful, and wit, advanced lists, unique interactions, protection magic. Yes, Orkish Dave can be a cleric. Now this is going to be very cool. Okay, so Orkish Dave, his journey begins. There we go. Immersive mode. Uh, yes, I think I want that on. Okay, the game won't display any metagame info, but you will be able to send your character to the online label when you retire them. Yes, rock on, fill your boots. Okay, the adventures of Orkish Dave are to begin. Ah, oh, it's so familiar. It feels like ages since I've been here. It feels like so bloody long. And yes, on there, we should. Oh no, do I not get to see my other characters? No, okay, fine, okay, well, maybe I'll see them somewhere else. Okay, so there's all these quests on the board. There are There's five quests on the board. There's the news, of which we don't have any. And, ooh, it's lagged a little bit. There we go, come out of that. And, um, yeah, there's the stuff we can buy. So we've got 300 gold. So where are we? We're down here, aren't we? So basically, I am just dressed in, in rags. I'm just dressed in rags. I haven't got a weapon. I've got nothing, mate. I've got nothing. I'm just some sort of, like, you know weirdo holding nothing so uh, i could buy myself some stuff now how much are all these things going to cost that's 80 that's four damage that's rather good isn't it but i need a herald background so i can't buy any of those okay yes of course they're grayed out so i can't buy them magic bracelet sounds quite cool or a wand yes a staff lesser magic pure magic at your service can't wield a shield but I get three damage. But a, a staff will give me two damage and one extra hit point. Oh, I like the sound of that. I quite like the sound of having a staff to give me a hit point boost. Yeah, okay, and they're only 40. So let's buy that. So I'll give myself a staff. And then I can choose one of these. So I've got 260, a habit. Yes. So I get two hit points. But if you give me padded armor... That's 50, whereas a habit is 200. Oh, it's quite expensive. But I also get a point of wit. And I am a cleric. That would befit that rather well, wouldn't it? Novice robe, jester robe. These are new, aren't they? Don't recognise these at all. Don't recognise those. Oh, look at that bad boy. <laughs> That's tremendous. I want that. No, I'm going to buy a habit. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to go full on, full on monk. Let's have that because it gives me a point of wit. So, um, oh, look, yes. Ah, is this what I'm... Is this what's changing? <gasps> oh, you can pick the colours. Oh, Orkish Dave is a big fan of the red. Orkish Dave is having that. Yeah, let's buy that. So what does he look like now? Oh, that is, that is it. That's it right there. There's your man. There's your man to save the world. Him, Orkish Dave. Look at him there. Looking awesome. Okay, cool. Right, let's pick our quests. So fist fights in the tavern. I think I've done that one. Laments in the cemetery. Rats in the basement. Goblin invasion. Is that is that new? I think that might be the new one. Or troubles with bandits. Okay, well let's which one do we want to do first? This fits this fight's one. Let's do that first. Let's get that one that one sort of out of the way. You get fifty gold for it. I can do a bit of fighting. I'm kind of fighty, but I'm quite witty as well, so I should be able to use my wit against them. So uh, we've read all these before, so I shall read them again because you might be watching this and new. So, rascals and delinquents have been amassing in my tavern for several days, participating in clandestine brawls organised by a notable stonecutter dwarf. I need someone who can teach him a lesson, or at least convince him to stop by any means necessary. They're wrecking my tavern! Your favourite host. P.S. Elwyn tequila shots for only three coins on Wednesdays. So we get 50 gold. So yeah, I think we go for that first. We'll try that one first. Now, if I remember rightly, I failed this one the last time. I think I nearly got the better of the dwarf, and then uh, he uh, he bested me at the end. So we'll see if we have any more joy with Orkish Dave. A small crowd of yokels and scoundrels is gathered in the centre of the inn. They've apparently knocked over tables and stalls to make room for the two men brawling in the middle. They're making a mess. 
All around them, all sorts of people are cheering for one or the other, betting, rudely and annoying, cursing and burping. Two other men lying down try to recover from what seems to have been a sound beating on the ring. Two more contestants, also quite drunk, just began a new fight, rallying the people inside the inn even more. Judging by his apparel, one of them must be a stonecutter, a burly middle-aged dwarf with fists as big as his head and clearly more devoted to fighting than commerce. The other is a young boy with pale skin and very dark hair, wearing a long robe, definitely too wide for his skinny body. Okay, now my choices are intervene with brute force, intervene peacefully, or go and find the guard. Well, I'm, I'm a cleric, so I'm going to intervene peacefully. I'm going to kind of role-play it a bit where it becomes obvious I need to use some, you know, something particular. If I have a particular skill or whatever, if I can go fighty, because he's not bad at fighting, I'll go for it. But yeah, he's a cleric, so he's going to intervene peacefully. You make your way... Oh, and it went to a branch point. You make your way through the crowd, emanating a dazzling blue gleam from your hands and eyes. Yes, because I'm a cleric. Everyone understands that you're one of the clerics from the temple. The mob falls silent and recomposes. The stonecutter kneels in sign, in sign of respect, while the boy furtively and quickly makes his way out of the tavern. Something must have frightened him. Okay, I last time I spoke to the dwarf, but what is the boy doing? Why is the boy running away? Let's follow the boy. I quite like that it stopped. I walked in as a cleric and went, yeah, I'm a cleric. Calm this down, folks. Let's follow the boy. You follow him outside of the tavern. You see him head left towards some fishermen's huts. You manage to stop him in an alley. He seems very nervous. Yes, well, Orkish Dave in his robes could look a bit threatening. Okay, you recognise the boy. It's Gavin, a young temple initiate. Ah, the saints have already severely appealed to him in the past due to his lack of discipline and reluctance to comply to the sacred vows. The boy begins to cry, saying he let himself get dragged into the atmosphere and that it won't happen again. He knows that it's forbidden by the sacred order to get drunk, break out fights and have disrespectful behaviour, not to mention bets and gamblings. So, I have a choice again. I'm indignant by his behaviour. Lecture him. He's just a kid. Be understanding. Convince him to confess his sins to the sacred order of the temple or convince him to go far away and atone for his sins. Okay, Orkish Dave is not a horrible man. I'm not going to convince him to go far away. Confess his sins to the sacred order... We could do that. Go back and make him do that. Or he's just a kid. Be understand. No, I think I might lecture him. I'm a bit cross with him. I'm going to lecture him to try and make him see the error of his ways. Yes, lecture him. You tell him he's not worthy of being a part of the sacred order of the temple. Oh, I didn't mean that. You also add that if it were other times, an imperial, an, an impious, impious, like him would have been burned at the stake of the sacred fire. No one can ignore the oaths. Okay. Right, I didn't mean for that to happen. Okay, tell him you'll have to take him back to the temple in order for the saints to punish him. Crikey, tell him to abandon the temple and never show himself again. I don't want to do that. Come back with me. We'll go to the temple. I'm sure we can sort things out. The boy is quite nervous. Eyes filled with... What, was, what just went down? Wit minus what? Why have I just lost my wit? Uh, the boy is quite nervous. Eyes filled with tears and legs trembling, just thinking about being punished by the saints. A terrible thought crosses his mind as he grabs a large wooden board and hits you on the head with brute force. Quite some time goes by before waking up. The boy is gone, most likely left you for dead. You return to the centre of the inn, thoughtful on what to do. Speak with the dwarf. So now I'm... I've got wit minus one because I'm presumably concussed or something. That's really irritating, isn't it? You are eager to hear the stonecutter story. You approach him. You ask why a stonecutter has become so quarrelsome in the tavern. The dwarf bluntly says that he wanted to give a lesson to all the long-legged son-of-a-guns he met in the inn. His daughter wants to marry someone who belongs to the tall races, and he can't accept that. Only a dwarf, possibly a noble stonecutter, is worthy of my daughter. Okay, so extort the money from the winds, or it doesn't matter, leave this drunkard alone. So I've calmed them down, I've stopped them fighting... I don't, I'm not going to extort money. That's not very cleric is it? I'm going to leave him alone. Leave the drunkard alone. You return to the centre of the inn, thoughtful on what to do. Well, I've calmed everything down using my magic cleric hands, so I'm done. Let's collect my reward. You get close to the counter and the innkeeper timidly pops out of his hiding place. He's very happy that you solved the problem and wholeheartedly shakes your hand. So I've got 60 gold at the moment. He is hopefully going to give me some gold. Yes, Sockish Dave. 50 gold. And... That's it. I got a little bit of renown and fame and some morality going on. Shame I couldn't save the boy. Oh, it's a shame. Yeah, I was hoping to be able to figure out more about the boy, but never mind. Right, back we go.
And there we go, it's complete. Thanks to you, the tavern is now safe from drunkards and scoundrels. Without the continuous brawling, the inn can go back to its tranquility and recover its respectable customers. And yes, that's been done. Our beloved little horn innkeeper can finally rest easy as his premises have been cleared up of the scum. A brave hero, whose name is still unknown, it's Orcish Dave, made sure to take care of the problem once and for all. Cheers to you, adventurer, Orcish Dave. Until our next drink. Okie doke. So we've got one quest done. And we're not going to retire him, obviously. Orcish Dave is not going to retire after just sorting out a bra... A, a bra? <laughs> a bar fight. Definitely not a bra fight. None of that was going on. He's a cleric, for goodness sake. So what should we do next? Troubles with bandits. Yes, let's do that. No, should we do the new quest? Goblin invasion is the new quest. So now I've got a bit of gold. Should we do this? This could be quite hard, or this could be quite a hard quest. I might need more gear for this one. I suspect if the reward is 150, I am going to uh, reward 250 for that one. Wow. Yeah, that was that was that's a lot. Um Yeah, should we do that one first? Get 250 gold. That's quite a lot of gold for that, isn't it? I don't remember ever receiving that last time out though. Or we could do the rats one. So we get a beer at the inn and my gratitude. This is the inn where we are, isn't it? Where we are right now, I believe. Okay. I don't know what to do. I don't know which one to go for. What money have we got? 110. I don't think we can buy anything. We'd have to buy like potion-y stuff if we wanted to. So we could buy something like that. Leviathan's Aquavit for 40. And then buy ourselves something that gives us... Yeah, a bit of damage reduction would be quite nice. If we're going to go into a fighty one, the Goblin Invasion perhaps. I think we do that later. We've done, we've done Troubles with Bandits before. And it ended up being fighty. So what I could do is get that one. So get Leviathan's Aquavit to give me four extra hit points. Glug, 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 glug. And then get that to give me... Or do I get that to give me damage resistance? No, one damage resistance. Or should we get two damage resistance? What does that give me? A bit of extra damage. Okay, so I could get a bit of damage resistance... And then, where's one that just gives me... Oh, a couple of points of wit might be quite nice. Yeah, okay, and then we'll have that for 20. So we've got some extra wit, some damage resistance, and lots of hit points. Let's go and do this. Troubles with bandits. A group of bandits is pestering our village with impossible demands. We've never been threatened by bandits before. We do not have soldiers to protect us. Please help us to get rid of them. On it. I'm absolutely on it. Do not worry. Go out the door. Right, where does this take us? It's up in the mountains, isn't it, somewhere? It's a little way off. Yeah. Oh, we're kind of back here again. He looks awesome, doesn't he? Nine hit points. You arrive to the village early in the morning. You talk to the old man, but he doesn't have any gold to offer. The shield brothers of the fortress up on the hills don't want to send the warriors. They say they have more urgent matters to deal with at the moment. They've protected us for years. We don't know how to defend ourselves. Don't abandon us. Cursing the old man, you leave his house. Thinking that you should help him anyway. Oh, he's just playing you, isn't he? Oh, don't leave me. I'm an old man. Yeah, whatever, old man. You take a long walk outside the village until you reach an unstable watchtower. You sit on a big rock, deep in your thoughts, when you hear the sentinels running down, saying the bandits are coming closer. Ah, cast a speed spell. These are all different. These are all different. Now I'm a magic user. These are all different options. This is brilliant. Cast a speed spell on the sentinels so they can reach the village more swiftly. Cast a speed spell on yourself so you can reach the village more swiftly and warn everybody. Wait for the bandits so you can negotiate. To hell with this damned village, you run to the inn. Well, no, I'm not doing that. I don't want to watch. I'm going to do magic of some sort. Um, should we cast a speed spell on the sentinels? Let's get those guys to the village really quickly. If we send those guys to the village, then yes, they can be there to deal with stuff. Now I can follow him behind the bad guys. And get in behind them. That's good. Oh, no, but do I want to do that? So I can reach the village swiftly and warn everybody. And then I'm there. No, on the Sentinels. Let's do that. The Sentinels thank you. Oh, yes, Orcish Dave. The Sentinels thank you and tell you to come as soon as possible. Then they run to the village. Can I cast it on me as well? Right. Go back to the village to lend a hand. I think that's good. I, I'm definitely not abandoning them. Waiting for the bandits so I can negotiate. I'm kind of on my own. I'd rather be in the village. So I've got a little bit of moral support from other people. So yeah, let's go back to the village to lend a hand. People run in panic. Some of them are barricading their homes. Others are taking their weapons. The village is in chaos. Try to calm down 
the scared villagers. You cannot help them if they are behaving like that. Go back to the old man's house and accept the job without compensation. Now I'm going to try and calm down the scared villagers. I'm a, I'm a priest. I can probably cast some spells on them, can't I? People are too scared to pay attention to what you're saying. They run in every direction in panic. Okay, go back to the old man's house and accept the job without compensation. The old man is grateful to you for your noble spirit. He entrusts you with the defence of the village. In the square, some men have taken up weapons, but they seem scared. An old man, another old man, is shouting that he will win this fight on his own, waving around a stick. Others are panicking around the village. Gather all those that can hold a weapon and motivate them with an inspired speech. That'll be the yellow one, won't it? That'll be the yellow skill, not wit. It'll be uh, whatever the yellow one was. I can't remember what it was now. But uh, yeah, not the ones I've got. Or you convince the old man to gather all the women and children and take them to a safe, build, a safe building. You don't need him here. Yes, I think that's a good idea. Old man, no use. <laughs> Some of the women could probably fight better than, than old Orkish Dave. And uh, yeah, the children, let's get them out of here. Let's do that. You cannot make him understand he's causing trouble around here. He stops waving around the damn stick, but keeps on yelling, making your soldiers even more stressed and tense. Ah, oh, you silly man. There's still time to improve the defences, okay? Gather all those who can hold a weapon and motivate them with an inspired speech. Your words are good words, but these men are just shepherds and peasants. They still look like a bunch of scared kids. Yeah, so if I had the talky one, I'd be able to talk them round, I bet, but no. Okay, there's no time left. You see the bandits coming toward the village. They stop at the entrance of the square, looking at your troop. A tattooed man with long hair steps forward and admits to be surprised of seeing you there, ready to fight. Okay, convince him to go away. Surely I can do some sort of clever clerical stuff on him. Neither your words nor your troops scare him. He looks at his men and with a snarl he orders the attack. Then he comes towards you with his club on his shoulder. Oh, literally we're going to go into a fight scenario, are we? Oh, botherations. Okay, fine. Uh, the chief is undamaged and ready to engage in combat. Okay. I have one damage reduction, which is good. I cause quite a bit of damage. He's not that tough. He's got one skull, so he's okay. Let's use exorcism. I don't know what it does, though. I don't know what the special attack does, but it's an attack nonetheless. So let's use it. And bang. Ooh, that is a hearty chunk out of his health there, isn't it? Okay. And uh, yeah, let's attack him. Oh my goodness. We are going to absolutely whoop him. We took one. Yeah, all right. Let's bash the chief. Yeah, I took a bit of damage. But the chief has been defeated. I am victorious. Go Orkish Dave. Orkish Dave is cool. The bandit is on the ground. Hurt and defeated. He orders his men to stop the attack and begs you for mercy. And so you should. Ask him for a ransom in exchange for his freedom. Kill him. Tie him up and deliver him to the authorities. I think we're going to tie him up and deliver him to the authorities. I don't want to kill him. I'm a cleric. Asking for a ransom seems a little bit mercenary. Yep, yeah, let's deliver him to the authorities. The chief kicks and screams while he is dragged to a farmstead. You throw a threatening look to his men and they all run away. Who would not run away from Orkish Dave? Okay, continue. Oh, yes, and we're done. The villagers thank you and they will always be grateful to you. And I've mastered the commoner skill or something. Yay, <laughs> good. I'm not a commoner though, but cool. Orkish Dave's getting all, always looking up at the gods. Oh, gods, please make me really cool and be able to do all the stuff. Yes, there we go. Commoners, I've actually maxed out there. Look, temple I've got a bit of. Okay, let's go back to the inn. The villagers thank you, and they will always be grateful to you. Ah, that's fine, villagers. And the bandit attack has failed. A brave adventurer challenged the attack of a group of bandits near a village on the northern hills. The old chief, abandoned by the regular troops of the kingdom, entrusted the protection of his fellow villagers to the goodwill of the many adventurers who roam our lands. The hero pushed back the whole band alone, caring little for his safety. We can only hope that other heroes like him will rise in the future. Yes, you'd better hope. Okay, three more quests. I'm going to save the new one, the Goblin Invasion. That's the new one. I'm going to save that for next time. Let's do Rats in the Basement. The hounds are searching for a volunteer to do a little routine job. We're too busy to take care of it at the moment. We would highly consider any help. This is the original message from old Rennie. Giant rats are infested in my basement, eating all of my supplies. Please, help me. Yep, yeah, okay, let's go and do that. We don't need to take anything special on for that, I don't think. I don't think we've got any money left to buy any uh, potions or beer or whatever. I think we spent it all on the last one. I don't think we needed to either, which is a bit annoying. You arrive at old Rennie's house and he immediately takes you to the hatch. Continue. While you're both crossing the room, he mumbles to himself. 
and keeps turning to look at you. He says, I asked for the help of a real hunter. I hope you know what you're doing. There's a time when you could count on the... Sh oh, no, that's not him talking. Is that him talking? No. There was a time when you could count on the Shield Brothers recruits to manage these things, but it now it goes to common people like the Hounds to take up arms and protect the subjects of the reign. Actual warriors can be hired only by nobles and rich men, and as if that wasn't enough, it seems even they are losing their mind now. Better cut to the chase, he says. There's some work to do here. Okie doke. He opens the hatch to the basement. Since you are here to help him, he'd be really grateful if you could also find his cat. Okay, uh, let's ask about the cat. He says that he has closed the poor little beast in the basement to hunt the rats, but the morning after there was no trace of it. Okay, I'm not going to bargain. I'm not going to bargain. It's fine. I'm just going to get into the basement and get on with this. So let's go in. The basement is a mess and it's very stinky. You look for animal signs and you find a big crack in the wall behind a half-eaten piece of furniture. No traces of the cat though. Okay, so squeeze through the crack, close the hole with another piece of furniture, or tell the old man there are no rats here. Well, seeing as we're down here, let's squeeze through the crack and have a little look around, shall we? You would never get inside. You're too big. Ah, so Orkish Dave can't get through because he's massive. Oh, I like that. Have you even taken into account the kind of class you are? Okay, well, let's tell the old man there are no rats here. He begs you to stay and kill the animals as soon as they come out. Okay, accept and wait for the rats to come out then. A few hours later, three dreadful dog-sized rats come out of the crack and bear down on you, showing their sharp teeth. Fight the beasts. The rats are undamaged and ready to engage in combat. Also, the rats are terrifyingly strong. That's a little bit worrying. Okay, let's use exorcism on them. And that did absolutely nothing. Oh, don't tell me that Orkish Dave is going to get killed by rats. This is a sad way for Orkish, Orkish Dave to go out. Okay, let's attack the rats. Boom. The rats have been defeated. You are victorious. I thought the two skulls meant they were hard to kill. Okay, there was no chance that three rats could eat you. You go back upstairs. Rennie is grateful for your help, but he wants to see those awful dead beasts. Okay. Once back in the basement, you show him the crack from where the rats have come out. It's big enough for him to get through. He tells you to wait him wait him here. He wants to take a look inside. Do you know what? Okay, rock on. Let him go. Cool. The old man disappears through the crack and you're left alone in the basement. All you can do is wait. Continue. Time passes, but there's still no trace of Rennie. I'll keep waiting. You wait a little longer, but the old man doesn't come back. You start thinking it was a wise decision not to take the risk inside that crack. Well, I couldn't fit inside the crack, so I was stuck. Okay, let's go away. You don't really know what to do. Better go away before somebody comes and blames you for his disappearance. Continue. Oh! <laughs> well, hang on. Hang on, that's harsh. I killed the rats. I, I killed the rats, didn't I? Maybe I should have covered up the hole before I did all that. Oh, dear. So I lost some reputation with the hounds. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, Orkish Dave looks so sad. I'm sorry, Orkish Dave. Okay, let's move back to the inn. Rennie is in a better place now, for sure. Or maybe he is still trapped underground. Yes, there is that chance, isn't there? And yes, this bulletin. There's no trace of old Rennie, a well-loved subject who lives in a small community of rain. Recently, he was complaining about giant rats in his house. This could have led to a tragic end for the old man. Now, that is unfortunate because down in the in there through the crack which Orkish Dave couldn't fit through because he's too big was a kind of weird magic crystal and there was a water sort of sprite or something a water elemental down there and because I'm a priest I might have been able to help with that that is a shame okay lament in the cemetery or goblin invasion okay yeah I, I'm, I'm checking the time I wanted these to not go on for ages but no they're going on okay we're, we're doing all right with these we've got 30 gold um, do you give me any money? Yara, you give me 50 gold. Let's do laments in the cemetery. The visitors have been terrorised by spine-chilling lamentations. The, ooh, that last, oh, the last few days. Even during the day. Looking for adventurer willing to take care of the situation. The caretaker. Yep, I'm on it. Let's go, caretaker. Yes, this is where we go to the weird purple hole in the ground of doom. Here we go. And... Yeah, that, that doesn't look good, does it? That's never a good sign. You arrive at the cemetery as the sun begins to set. The massive gates are open, so you make your way through, leaving the tall boundary walls behind. This is the biggest, most ancient cemetery in the rain. It looks more like a park with all this vegetation and architectural structures. Only the nobles and leading figures of the court are buried here, or anyone rich enough to afford a tomb here. You proceed on the gravel until you arrive at the caretaker's hut. Okay, well, we're here. Let's knock on the door. Knock, knock, knock. 
An old bald man with a crooked back opens the door. You're here for the lamentations job, am I right? He says, eyeing you. You nod. Come inside. The hut is dark and dusty, perfectly in tone with the cemetery. You take a seat and the caretaker immediately explains the problem. It's a common thing to hear faint laments or even feel immaterial presences, but since a chasm opened up, the situation has gotten terribly worse. There's a spirit of a woman in particular that emits excruciating shrieks during the night. I've been doing this job for years, so I'm used to it. But now that she began screaming even during the daytime, she's been scaring off all the visitors. I've no intention of getting close to her. I've only been able to learn that her name is Amita. I'll show you the area in which she usually appears, so you may do what you deem necessary. Okay, why is there a chasm? I have to find the spirit he's going to show me there anyway. Let's ask about why there's a gigantic hole to hell opened up. It appeared a few months ago. It swallowed up the central area of the cemetery along with the old caretaker, apparently. Oh, I'm his successor. Nobody gets close. And they're not, and they're right not to. Just looking at it gives you the chills, but worry not. Our bothersome spirit isn't in that area, says the old man, smiling. I thought he said he'd been here for years. <laughs> and now he's saying he's been here for a few months. Okie doke. Ask where to find the spirit. He says you can find her near a big mausoleum close by. You can wait for nightfall here, as the spirit always comes out at night. You chat a little more until you begin to hear the lamentations. There she is on time as usual. The caretaker walks you to the door and shows you the way to the mausoleum and then waves you off. You make your way towards your destination and arrive a few minutes later. On the mausoleum stairs sits an ethereal figure, slightly luminescent and despairing. Okay, I've got power so I can ask who she is. I can ask her what the problem is or I can give her some relief with my powers. I'm a cleric. This is a spirity person. I, I'm going to try that option. Let's do that. You recite a formula to alleviate this poor spirit's suffering, but nothing happens. This leaves you puzzled. Harmless spirit should immediately calm down. Might her sorrow be too much? The wraith stops lamenting for a moment, just enough time to look at you, then goes back to its despair, diverting its gaze. I'm going to ask who she is. My name is Amita. I'm an unlucky woman who's lost her loved one. I cannot find his spirit, moans the wraith, sobbing. She looks like a woman past her youth, with long curly hair that falls onto her chest. Okay, I'm going to ask her what the problem is. I rather suspect she's just told me the problem, that she can't find her, the, her loved one's spirit. But okay, let's ask her what the problem is again and get some more information. My love, I cannot find my love. He died some time ago. and We had promised to find each other in the afterlife, but his remains must be too far away. I cannot find him. I beg you. Bring him to me. Okay, so ask her what you need to do. Her gaze lights up. Find his remains and bring them to the ossuary. This way we will finally be close and I will be able to find him. His name is Ghent. He was the offspring of a small noble family of the Rain. I am sure you will not have any problems finding him. After pronouncing those words, the spirit slowly vanishes into thin air. You return to the caretaker and report what you learned from the wraith. Done already? asks the old man, amazed. You explain the spirit's request, and the caretaker has no objections. Nobody will get angry if we move a pile of bones. Follow me. Let's find out where this Ghent is buried. The caretaker uh, oh dear, the caretaker leads you toward a small closet. There are huge tomes on top of shelves high up on the walls. These are the cemetery log books. All of our guests are written down here, he says, giggling. <laughs> I suppose he doesn't get out much. In a corner, you notice a broken glass case. The piece is still scattered on the floor. Let's ask about the broken glass case. That? I don't know. It was like that when I came here. And no, those pieces of glass on the floor aren't bugging anyone. They don't pay me to clean up this place. I'm just a guardian, he says, good-naturedly. Hmm. I wonder if someone with, you know, different skill set might spot something different there. Someone with uh, the talky one rather than wit would uh, be able to get something out of him regarding that. Okay. The caretaker approaches one of the shelves and grabs an old, dusty tome. He puts it onto a table in the middle of the room and begins searching. Take a seat. It'll take some time to find him, having only a name. Only having a name at my disposal. You sit down and wait patiently. In the meantime, you look around and browse through the big tomes that surround you. Pages and pages of names and stories. Ask how many people are buried here. Thousands, at least. And all rich people, heroes or great nobles... Well, more or less, I suppose. There's always someone who manages to obtain a spot here, some way or another. There's competition and envy even after death, the caretaker explains. One of which is our friend Ghent. His name doesn't ring a bell, adds the old man, continuing his search. Okay. 
There he is, shouts the caretaker after searching for almost an hour. His tomb is in the outskirts of the cemetery. Those are the cheaper spots, he continues, while hastily reading his biography. Ah, stabbed to death, and at young age as well. What a shame. The old man closes the book and asks you to follow him. He picks up the necessary tools to exhume the corpse, and you make your way to the tomb. You quickly find the property of Gent's family, a small piece of land enclosed by an elaborate fence. Various tombstones fill the ground, some of which with little sculptures on top, others with a slab of rock placed horizontally to protect the coffin below. You find the name you were looking for on one of these, written on the epitaph, divided by death, united by it, G and L. The caretaker begins his work on the tomb. Okay, so uh, yeah, I've kind of done this before, but if you don't know this, then yeah, I'll say it again. G and L, so Ghent and Amita. Hang on a minute, why is there an L? So let's examine the other tombstones. As you look around, your eye falls onto the tomb next to Ghent's. It's quite simple, just a tombstone and a name. Lin, you look at Ghent's epitaph once more. G and L, could it be referring to Ghent and Lin? Though you don't believe she's part of the family, you wonder why her grave is here. You quickly survey the other tombstones, but that's the only name that looks out of place. Your thoughts are interrupted by the caretaker, who calls out to you for help on removing the heavy slab of stone. Let's go and help the caretaker. Together you manage to move aside the massive slab that encloses Ghent's tomb. What you find surprises you. No coffin. Just an empty hole. The caretaker is speechless and moves his lantern a little closer to shed more light. You see a large opening on one of, on one of the sides, which looks like the entrance to a tunnel. Now I understand, the old man intimates with a solemn tone. It has to be the ghoul's handiwork. Those bone noras took more of the bodies. Okay, where are they taking his remains then? I'm almost certain they have an underground hideout. I haven't seen one in a long time, but bodies keep disappearing. You gaze upon the empty tomb a little longer. What do you intend to do? Let's go down into it. Let's go down into the hole and have a look around. Drop down into the hole and venture through the tunnel. Preparing a trap. Yeah, I'm I'm you know, I'm dealing with the graveyardy stuff. I'm a priest, I should be fine. Let's drop in. You tell the caretaker to go home. You'll go down the tunnel and find the ghouls that plunder Gent's remains, after which you return to him. The old man seems a little worried, but doesn't insist. After all after all, you are the adventurer. He slowly vanishes as you light a torch and begin wandering through the tunnel. Okay, continue. After a little while, you see some light in front of you. You must be close to the ghouls. You take a peek. I um, mean, you tell them about that. That's the wrong way of spelling pig for this particular purpose. You take a peek around the corner and spot two skeletal figures muttering between themselves. They're in some sort of excavated room in the ground from which spread several passages. You see some coffins stacked all around them, scarcely illuminated by some candles in the corners of the room. Gent's coffin is probably one of those. Okay, let's wait for the right moment to surprise them. I'm not a warrior type, I'm a cleric, so let's, you know, let's be a bit cautious. So let's wait for the right moment. You wait patiently for an opportunity, which doesn't take long to arrive. One of the ghouls wanders off, while the other one begins poking around one of the coffins, facing away from you. I'm going to capture it for interrogation. Now... I can't remember what I did last time with my previous character, with Billy Cupboard. I can't remember what I did. Did I kill it? Let's capture it. You abandon your hideout, but in doing so, accidentally kick a rock. The ghoul turns around and screams in pure terror. It runs away before you have the chance to take another step. Shocked by the undead's reaction, you don't waste any more time and begin searching for Gent's coffin. You find one with his name carved on it. You open it up to make sure his remains are still there. Ghouls are greedy for bones. Afterwards, you drag it with some effort to the grave and heave it onto the surface. It's time to go back to the caretaker. Okay. The caretaker is happy that you've recovered the coffin. Good. Now let's go to the ostrary so this story may end once and for all. Though it'll be best not to tell the family we've moved in there, as it's not a very prestigious place. Okay. Let's ask about the ossuary then. Why is it not prestigious? It's a place where the corpses of people who dishonoured the good name of their families are buried explains the old man. Oftentimes, the richer families buy entire areas in the cemetery for them and, their, them and their descendants, but when someone doesn't behave properly, they are buried in the ossuary to hide them from the others and their sins, and also to not disgrace the memory of their relatives buried next to them. Rich people are really odd. Okay, let's investigate on Amita. All right, let's see what there is to know about her, says the caretaker. The old man flips through the dusty tomes for quite some time. You're about to lose hope when, finally, the old man exults, satisfied. 
While he reads, his look darkens a little. This explains why she was buried in the ossuary, he says, raising his sight. She was a noblewoman, but disgraced herself after committing a homicide. The caretaker goes quiet again as he reads the next paragraph. Oh, and you'll never imagine who a victim was, he yells with eyes wide open. No other than Ghent we exhumed. She stabbed him a dozen times. By the gods, what a tragedy. After which she was imprisoned and executed and buried here, obviously. The old man closes the book and looks at you, waiting for you to say something. Bring Ghent's remains to the ossuary anyway, or bury Ghent's remains in his tomb again. Okay, that's quite interesting, isn't it? I don't remember getting these choices before either. So we can either take him back to his tomb and put him down, because obviously she killed him to death and she is not meant to be with him. She's not supposed to be with him, but then we won't get paid. We won't get the money for this if we do that, I don't believe, because the lamentations will continue. But if we bring Ghent's remains to the ossuary anyway, she's going to win. And she clearly is a lunatic because she stabbed him to death. Let's take them with us and see what she says. I think that sounds like a good plan. Bring them with us and just use them as a sort of bargaining tool if we can. Let's do that. You load the coffin onto a cart and make your way toward the ossuary. The structure is imposing. As the caretaker opens the heavy doorway, you're overwhelmed by cold, humid air. You begin descending this noiseless abyss, transporting Ghent's remains to an empty cavity. You carefully lay down the coffin, then the caretaker asks, What now? As soon as he finishes the phrase, the spirit of Amitra appears. The old man leaps in fear. There, I finally sense him. Thank you for your help. May the gods bless you. Okay, so, you can make a promise not to torment anyone any longer, then leave, or ask her why she's still looking for the man she murdered. Let's ask why she's looking for the man she murdered. Amita seems surprised for a moment. You know... She hesitantly asks. You tell her about the logbook and ask her again. It does not concern you. No, only that I have my reasons. She answers, annoyed. I did not think you would have investigated. I admire your shrewdness and the fact that you brought Ghent to me, despite knowing the truth. I want you to have this gift. The caretaker seems alarmed by her words and pulls one of your arms. He whispers, It's never a good thing to receive a gift from the dead. Do you know what? I'm going to go for it. Orkish Dave, he's a priest. He's, you know, one with the gods. He's one with, you know, dead people. He, he loves a bit of this. He loves a bit of the undead stuff. Let's accept the gift and see what this is. Oh. Oh, what? I've got HP minus two. Condition long lasting. Oh. I should have listened to the old man. Amita makes her way towards you and kisses you on the lips. You don't feel any contact, only freezing cold and a shortage of breath. Then comes the pain. You fumble for a moment, clinging onto the caretaker, making an effort not to fall and trying to catch your breath. I told you! yells the old man. You slowly recover, and when you look around, a meter is nowhere to be seen. You and the custodian go back to the ossuary. Then you take your reward and go back to the inn. Oh, okay. Well, that didn't work very bloody well then, did it? That didn't work very well. Oh! Hang on. Hang on, what? I've got extra... I've got more damage, though. So I've been knocked down by two... Uh, hit points, but I appear to have two more damage. Okay. Okay, well, let's go back then. Let's have a look what that is. So, we succeeded. The spirit has been pacified and your pockets filled. You still feel a little exhausted. <gasps> oh, that's beautiful. You still feel a little exhausted, but strange enough, also a little more awake. Some rest will probably help you recover your strength. Okay, we got 50 gold, which is lovely. We got various bits of reputation. We lost a bit of morality because we dug someone up and chucked him in a tomb where he didn't belong got some honor and yes look temple we've maxed out the temple bit which means we get cleric mastery plus two hit points which will offset the ones we just bloody lost from getting cursed and whatever it was by that silly ghost lady hopefully that'll go away at some point okay so uh yeah well, now we have goblin invasion and enchanted waters okay let's just read this bit so the spirit has passed oh yeah there we go that's the same thing as before it's been months now the pit has been under careful inspection by the clerics of the temple. In the meantime, there are more and more reports of supernatural events in the area. Luckily, the brave adventures of the rain rush to assist the visitors and inhabitants of the area, reclaiming the restive dead and in so making our rain ever more safe. Ah, that's good. Okay, so, Orkish Dave does have HP minus two. So now he's got, uh, but he's still got five hit points because now we've got an extra two from the, um, from our mastery of being a cleric which is a little bit annoying because we would have had seven hit points that's pretty flipping impressive so we've got five 
uh, of that. Yeah, I wish you'd tell me what they were, because I can't remember what they are. Base 1, base 3, and base 2, but I can't remember what that is. That's strength, wit, and... Oh, cunning! That was it. It was cunning, wasn't it? That was a... Of course it was. Okay, so Orcish Dave has done well. We've got 80 gold to spend, and the next one we are going to do is this. The Goblin Invasion. It's a new quest. I know not what it entails. We're going to save that for next time. So yeah, Orkish Dave's doing alright. He's last until day 13 and we've got some money to spend on nice things. So if it's an, if it's a goblin invasion, we might go down this route. We might get ourselves some uh, some, where is it? Not that one. Uh, possibly that. Where's the damage reduction? Yeah, that one. So get some damage reduction because we're going to be fighting, I would guess. Let's just read what it says before we go. An enraged Oh, ah, at enraged goblin horde has come from the western woods. They've been going around that area for a while and then occupied a village forcing some inhabitants to flee. Their great number prevents us from pushing them back, so we're looking for a valiant hero who could convince them to leave. Oh, no. Okay, maybe the convincing means that I have to go down a route of one of those? Get myself four cunning? I don't know. I don't know. Or do I go for the Royal Reserve Whisk and get a bit in each? Okay, we shall ponder that. But yeah, so we're not done yet. The Tales of Orcish Dave are going to continue. There are more quests. There's that one. Goblin Invasion, there's this with the Enchanted Waters, and then obviously more spring up after that. I think there's three or four more. We've got the Dragon ones yet to do. So, yes, we should do those next time out. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. How much cake did you have? Not a lot. You bugger off to the door. Blah. Can I be sick down our back? Oh, good. There's nothing creepy about some mysterious, ethereal humming. Oh no, Mum's been on the gin again. Mum's been on the gin and she's been watching rom-coms. Oh Mum, no, what have you done? <laughs>